So hi, hello to everyone. Good afternoon. I am Bianca Zainko. I work for the OECD. And it's really a pleasure to welcome you today to this webinar on uh, playing economics, innovative methods to spread financial literacy. So first of all, it's uh, really nice to be here with you. And I'm really very excited to be part of this webinar. I'm looking forward to learn a lot about um, the projects which are going to be presented uh, today. And I would like to also thank the colleagues from the Collegio Carlo Alberto and the PUSH program for organizing this webinar in occasion of the Global Money Week. So I will be very brief because we have a lot of uh, exciting projects to present today. Uh, but I just wanted to mention that, of course, this year, the Global Money Week has reached 117 countries, which is uh, quite a record uh, since the OECD uh, took over the Global Money Week. And um, this year, it's uh, really um, quite special because even countries that are going through very difficult times are participating in the Global Money Week. And here I refer to Ukraine and Yemen, actually, under the leadership of the central banks in these uh, two countries. And I really must say that I am personally very impressed uh, by the resilience of our colleagues and the dedication they put into financial education programs in their countries. And uh, this, this really makes me think, it gets me very excited all the time on Global Money Week, of course, but it also makes me think that if they can do it in these uh, difficult circumstances, we really have no excuses to not take financial education seriously as for what it is, which is a uh, life skill for all of us. But of course, that uh, I know that all of you who are here today at the, uh, the webinar, uh, you are very well acquainted with financial education, its importance. So I don't want to preach to the choir, but um, if you allow me a couple of uh, opening comments before I give the floor to, to Marco to, to run through the, the webinar today. So first of all, uh, what I want to say is that uh, it's been about 20 years since the OECD started to work on, the, on these issues. And in these 20 years, we have really learned uh, so much about uh, financial education. Our thoughts about uh, what financial education is have evolved, how it is defined, what its goals are, and how it actually works in practice, and what are tools that can make it more effective. And uh, do we have now the answers to all of our questions? Of course, we certainly don't, but we do know now uh, what can make financial education in general more effective. And what we can see also is that a lot of organizations are focusing now more and more on changing behavior rather than just sharing knowledge. Uh, many consider life stages of their target audiences uh, when they deliver their messages so that these messages are most relevant. Um, and of course, a lot of times there are uh, innovative techniques that are being used in financial education. We'll hear more about these today, uh, this has, such as digital tools, uh, serious games or live simulations to really help achieve um, highest engagement and long-term impact uh, with, with these financial education programs. And these are all uh, examples of approaches that really can make financial education more effective. And of course, today, I'm really excited to, to hear about, uh, about these new ideas um, uh, from, from the organizations that we'll be presenting. Um, then secondly, and I know we say this all the time, that doesn't make it less true, is that our financial systems are becoming more and more complex. Uh, if we just think about the digitalization of the financial sector and the new products, uh, financial products that are coming on the market all the time, uh, crypto assets, online credit, in-app purchasing for, purchases, for example, which uh, are available to even young consumers, uh, but also sustainable finance. All these factors really add to uh, complexity that uh, individuals have to deal with. So in this complex, complex environment, I would say, uh, the role of financial education, in my view, is really to try to keep it simple, to somehow go back to basics, um, or maybe to the ABC of finance, like one of the programs that will be presented today, uh, today is called, and to make it easy for individuals, especially for the young people, to really acquire uh, core understanding and concepts or critical think thinking that can help them navigate uh, the financial sector, no matter how complex it is or how complex, complex it becomes. And here I'm not necessarily talking about basic concepts, concepts of inflation, which of course are very important to, to know, 
Um, but I'm referring more to basic understandings of, for example, the fact that we as individuals are responsible for the financial decisions that we take and that choices that we make in the financial sphere will affect us today. They will affect us tomorrow and uh, most likely will affect others around us or entire uh, ecosystem. And of course, I cannot uh, conclude without mentioning the increasing importance of understanding the linkages between financial literacy and sustainable finance um, and the importance of supporting individuals to take financial decisions which are aligned with their long-term values and preferences, but also to help individuals protect themselves from emerging risks related to climate change, such as material risks or transition risks. And we know by now that financial education can support outcomes at both individual and societal level. It can contribute to inclusive and sustainable growth. And I really think that this should also become more and more ingrained in all financial education programs uh, that we deliver. And um, just to say that we know, and especially young people, um, want to make positive contributions towards a sustainable future. And as financial education providers, we can support them by discussing sustainable finance, for example, and uh, prompt them to be forward-looking and to take a broad view of the environment and the society as they make financial decisions. And this is why actually the theme of the Global Money Week this year for the first time was emphasizing the link between individual and uh, sustainability issues. So the theme is, as you all know, plan your money, plan your future. So with this, I uh, want to thank you once again for uh, being part of the Global Money Week and for uh, taking innovative approaches and being uh, excited about uh, these topics. And uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for inviting me to speak and I give the floor to Marco to take us through. Thank you very much Bianca for your introduction and your words that uh, of course they can be they can seem straightforward but it's very useful sometimes to, to repeat ourselves the, the importance of a financial literacy in these particular times even more. Uh, so thank you and I leave uh, uh, immediately the floor to Elsa Fornero that will present uh, our uh, uh, the project and the angle project and so here it is. So here I am and uh, I thank uh, Bianca for her introduction which has been very wide and very relevant and it is true that nowadays uh, there is uh, a much uh, more consciousness about the importance of financial literacy, but certainly the objective has not been reached yet. I remember when uh, some of us, and, and in particular, I want uh, uh, to, well, to tell about Anna Maria Luzardi, who was the really beginner of uh, the crusade, I would say, um, well, then uh, there was a lot of skepticism, even some kind of ostracism towards a financial education, towards, uh, because uh, in many circumstances, uh, some people think that is uh, perhaps the best, that the less, the least the people know, the better it is, which is, uh, uh, of course, uh, the exact contrary to, our, to the working of a better society. So we want financial literacy also as a kind of citizenship. And we are convinced that uh, without financial literacy, not only financial well-being of the people is uh, uh, very uncertain and at risk, but also the working of our democracies uh, is at risk. So, well, engagement has been a lot, but engage, we still need a lot of engagement. And uh, one of my favorite saying is that uh, while there have been an increasing passion towards uh, the problems uh, of the green economy, the problems created by uh, uh, the transformation of our climate, uh, we need the same kind of passion for financial literacy. And we need uh, to uh, bypass uh, all uh, the resistance uh, that still is there. 
Uh, we have contributed here in Turin, but of course uh, we have uh, participated in various team and uh, in various projects. And so today I would like uh, to start with the presentation of, uh, um, sorry, I want to start with the presentation from the beginning um, of a project, which is a project of a game and you will see uh, an, exam an example of the game today. And of course, we have discovered uh, that many people uh, uh, had the same idea and have created uh, kind of games uh, to involve the young in financial literacy educational programs. Um, and so we have uh, thought uh, of uh, uh, organizing this uh, presentation, this meeting, this hour, in the Global Money Week, for which we are uh, thankful to uh, the OECD and uh, uh, to the people that, who have made uh, this uh, meeting, um, uh, which is possible. We want uh, to thank this, but uh, present the other projects uh, uh, whom are there. We have chosen four of the projects. And we will leave uh, some time uh, to the single presentation of these uh, other financial games uh, project or something like that. So as for uh, the, our project, uh, our project is called Angle, and it is a network game for life cycle education. I would say something about uh, the aims and the target, the team, the output, and uh, some sketch of the finding that is not only the, the game itself, but also the other outputs. So uh, the aim is to promote and enhance uh, younger generation financial literacy with possibly two innovations. First is to adopt a life cycle perspective, which is very important because what we know is sometimes the difficulties of the young to try and see the consequences of their choices exactly when they are young. But even a choice like uh, following an educational path has a lot of financial implications. And so it is important that even at very, very young age, uh, there is a basic knowledge of the concepts that are involved. We are not asking the young to become expert in finance, far from this, but they should know the basic concepts. Innovative technologies, it's in particular co-creation, and we will talk about this in presenting the game. Main target university students, secondary uh, secondary target high school students and also the need and you know that the need is a problem in particularly in some uh, uh, southern European countries and Italy is one of them. Uh, why game? I have discovered this uh, quote which has been attributed to Benjamin Franklin and uh, I am particularly fond of this because it says, tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. And I think uh, in, uh, the kind of involvement that there is in a game can be even uh, uh, more than what you have in active teaching at school, for example. And here we have some uh, a, a very short list of uh, um, games uh, that have the same uh, objectives as uh, our game. So the life cycle approach, just two words. You, many of you know that this has been uh, a research output of uh, an important Italian economist, uh, who is the only one who won the Nobel Prize, Franco Modigliani. And Franco Modigliani had his Nobel Award exactly because he thought of uh, uh, saving decision in terms of life cycle. 
that his people have a working life, they earn a man, some money, but they have to think also of the part of their life when they will not work any longer, and so they will not have another a, a, an income to support their consumption. So the important thing of this approach is to think forward, to think long term, and the the project has three different kind of outputs. In particular, first, there is a booklet series, which are already available in our website, which we are called the Be in Charge of Your Life Cycle, the Board Game. Also, this one, as Emilia will say, is available on the website. And then we will have online videos co-created with the students. The partners, uh, you see there are the different institutions. It is us in Turin, CERP, Collegio Carlo Alberto, uh, Skill uh, Together and Following Italy Now, and then PUSH. PUSH uh, is uh, the group of people who are in charge of the game. Then uh, Dauphine, the university in Paris, uh, ETLA in Finland and the Warsaw School of Economics uh, and, uh, and Tilburg University. And I have to say that all the people involved uh, worked a lot for this project, even if the output seem a game, there is a lot of work behind. Uh, the funding uh, stakeholder and stakeholders, the, the project is financed by the Erasmus Plus, program of the European uh, Union. Uh, we also have universities and high school, as you have seen, and uh, OECD, financial institutions, uh, some, somehow uh, engaged, EU financial committees, central banks, uh, financial observatories, if, we, if they, through interactions. And then public institutions uh, can, uh, have, uh, for example, we have uh, different uh, interactions uh, with local labor uh, offices, uh, because as I've said at the beginning, uh, the project is also directed uh, not only to students, uh, but also to young people looking for a job, and maybe they have a degree or even more, and for people who are more difficult to find that are neither in employment nor in education. And then consumer association, student association, and citizens association. The booklet has um, the output five, which is five booklets. I have already said something. And uh, here you have uh, an outlook of the booklet. The first one uh, described the life cycle and the main choices on which we want to have, uh, let's say, a basket of basic concepts. Uh, booklet two is particularly important because, because it, it concerns the choice of education. Uh, booklet uh, four, sorry, booklet three, which I don't see here, is about, oh, sorry is about uh, a saving. Booklet four is about buying house and booklet five is about retirement. So you see, we chose these uh, basic decision points and we wanted to construct around the story, the basic financial concepts that we think are needed to avoid at least uh, basic mistakes. And also, as I said before, to understand what's going on in our economic world, which is quite complex. The game is here. I will not uh, say anything because Emilia will say about this. And uh, so I will just uh, thank you all and now say that the booklets uh, are available in English, English is uh, the language which has been adopted, but uh, in our contract with Erasmus Plus, we also have uh, um, an engagement to translate into the language of the, each country participated in, participating in the project. 
Um, and uh, all I have said is already uh, downloadable at our uh, website. And so if you want uh, to go and have a look and suggest us and write to us, that will be very much appreciated. Uh, Marco, if I have uh, forgotten something, you may uh, now uh, uh, say. Otherwise, I give you the floor to introduce Emilia and then uh, the other presentations. Thank you. Yes, I think that we are uh, very late with the schedule. So let's try to waste uh, as um, less time as possible. So Emilia, if you want to share. Say good afternoon to, to the audience. And uh, I thanks all the um, people that work for make this uh, event possible. And uh, uh, I, I, my name is Emilia Pardi. I work. Uh, uh, at PUSH. I'm actually a designer and uh, associate director on uh, this organization that is a uh, um, design lab based in Palermo since uh, 2013. And uh, we apply design uh, to address uh, the contemporary challenges uh, of uh, our society and to support sustainable uh, development and um, social innovation. Next, please, Marco. And we apply different techniques to, to achieve these goals. And uh, we are particularly, uh, we like particularly co-creation and, and game design, which are uh, the core of our uh, recent uh, work as uh, applied uh, researchers do. And uh, they are actually at the base, uh, the pillar of the de development of the angle game. So uh, I would like to, to show you a video, that, a video teaser that we create to present the angle game as a main result of this project that uh, Professor Fornero has uh, introduced before. Angle is the board game that will teach you the ins and outs of personal finance along the life cycle. At the start of the game, you will discover your character, play the game, and know all about the story. During the game, you will test your knowledge of economics and finance by answering quizzes and interacting with checkpoints. You'll have to make tough decisions and to live with the consequences. With realistic scenarios and challenging dilemmas, Angle will give you a taste of how financial knowledge can impact your life. The aim of the game is to complete the life cycle path with the highest level of wealth by earning points and collecting badges. Wealth is not only a matter of money, you will have to accumulate experience and knowledge as well. Chance cards will also allow you to earn points, but in some cases may have a negative impact on your and the other player's scores. Uh, I think it's um, a good overview of uh, the atmosphere and the uh, and the design uh, of this game that uh, I will explain more in detail in the next slide. This presentation will be about the game itself, but also about uh, the co-creation process that is behind this game. That for us, uh, as a, as designer, uh, is one of the the most uh, uh, important results of this uh, project. So uh, next, uh, next please, Marco. This is uh, uh, basically the main uh, component of, uh, of the angle game. You have a, a board. Uh, it's a board game. It's not a digital game. It's a physical one. And uh, you have a board, dice, and uh, cards. Uh, players have to, to move along the path uh, with, uh, with the dice and uh, they have to interact with, uh, with the, all the squares. Next one, please. <laughs> the game is inspired, as uh, Professor Fornero said before, uh, to the Modigliani life cycle concept. That's why the, the world is divided into four phases that represent somehow the, some stages some uh, core stages of uh, the life cycle of a person that is the teen stage, the young, the adult one, and uh, the senior one. 
In the, the table, you can see also some different colors that represent uh, different paths of the life. The yellow one is the education path that in the phase of teen is the, the unique one, basically, hopefully. Uh, then you have the, the, yeah, the light blue one that is related to work and the red one that is related to experience, extra work or studying, such as some gap year or volunteering that's in some period of life help people to mainly address their ambition and uh, objectives. So uh, the game is uh, not a matter of uh, chance, but uh, uh, the players have uh, to, to make some uh, choices, strategic choices, and uh, lead with uh, trade-offs. The main objective of the game is to uh, achieve uh, the higher the higher West level of uh, wealth. And when we talk about wealth, we don't um, uh, refer just uh, to money, but uh, to the combination of the three aspects that uh, I said before. Next one, please, Marco. So the players um, can make points, earn points by answering uh, quizzes uh, when they move along the path. And um, we designed uh, three different kinds of uh, quizzes that are factual, uh, financial literacy, and numeracy. The first one are related to statistics, basic facts uh, related uh, to, to economy and uh, life cycle, uh, as I said before. The financial literacy series of quizzes, it's more related to definition and, uh, and concepts. And uh, the numeracy one uh, needs uh, some calculation uh, to, to solve the quiz and to answer uh, correctly. The quizzes are also divided into the different uh, life cycle stages. So when you answer a, a, a quiz, it is related somehow at uh, that that uh, particular phase. And uh, they are also divided into two levels of difficulties that were carefully uh, settled after the co-creation cycle. Next one, Marco. At the beginning of uh, the game, the player receives a role card that uh, represents a character that uh, has a um, a budget in, in points into the three different tokens that are experience, knowledge, and money. And uh, this character uh, has an evolution during the game. And at the end of the game, uh, he or uh, she can, uh, can reach a different uh, uh, scenario. So the, the objective of the player is to reach the best one. Next one. Um, the, at certain point of, of the board, you have the checkpoint. Uh, next one, Marco, I can highlight the checkpoint. Okay. In, the, in this particular square, the players have to, to take a decision on what they want to do in their life, such as studying or working or uh, doing some experience. And uh, they have the power of this uh, decision, but like in the real life, some uh, events can affect this decision. So they have to throw another dice that can, um, um, that, that can lead to uh, one of the three different uh, scenarios. Uh, the, the worst one, uh, not allow the players to, to continue in, in their decision, so they have to change somehow the program. The medium scenario is like uh, um, as a just one kind of, uh, uh, of token, and the best one, the best one has a, a combination of two tokens. For instance, in the education path, you can. Uh, um, choose to, to enroll the university, but if you get the, the best one, you enter with a scholarship. So you have a, a combination of money and the knowledge at the same time. Next one, Marco, please. 
Uh, is, if you have ever played Monopoly or, or other uh, many famous games, uh, you know the power of uh, chance cards that are uh, really relevant during uh, um, a gameplay. They can affect the score in a positive or negative uh, way, and they can also affect, uh, in this case of uh, our game, the other player's uh, chance. Next one. So now it's time to, to talk a bit about uh, what, what is behind the building and the, the design uh, of this game. The first group of concept was in Turin in 2020, in Carlo Alberto University, in which uh, a group of students were involved in uh, playing uh, this um, structure, basic structure of the game that they drafted before. And uh, we received really positive feedback. So we were encouraged uh, to apply for an Erasmus project that then led to the creation of uh, the final version of the game. The, the creation was a really participative process. As you can see here in these pictures, they, uh, there are some moments in which uh, the students tested the, the game itself. And uh, the, the game changed a lot, its shape, uh, depending on the feedback we were uh, receiving. The first uh, version, uh, next slide, please, Mark, had this kind of uh, totem uh, that were showing the different uh, destiny uh, at checkpoints. Then we realized that they were uh, affecting the, the, the experience of the players. So we change for another version, next one, in which we also changed the shape of, of the path for a square one. Then uh, this version, it was uh, uh, a bit unclear on the, on the phases uh, of the life cycle and the first path. So again, after uh, collecting all the feedback, we uh, reached the final uh, version. That is uh, the one you can now download on, uh, on our uh, website. I, next one, I want to do some, uh, to communicate some uh, numerical data about this co creation process. We have uh, in total almost uh, 120 participants, uh, basically. Uh, equally divided into male and, uh, and female, with an average age of uh, 20. And different background because they they were coming to high school in some cases like in uh, in Italy uh, from the Lyceum or uh, from university in the field of agriculture international relations management uh, engineering languages medical school law educational uh, sciences and also economics uh, we tried to uh, address different targets because we wanted to be sure that the game. Uh, was suitable for people that uh, didn't have a, a solid background in uh, economics, but also can, could be played by people that were uh, in the field of uh, economics. Uh, we uh, received uh, many positive feedbacks again, uh, that were confirming the idea that uh, using a game to uh, learn a, a new concept is a, a, a good idea and an effective uh, process in terms of uh, education. And uh, so students say that uh, they enjoy the gameplay, but at the, at the same time, they learn a lot of, uh, of new things. And also the side of, of the quiz, they said, uh, the students uh, like the, the, the way in which they were formulated. I would uh, like to mention the colleague uh, of the um, project, uh, Angle, a uh, European project that uh, the academic, that's from uh, the academic institution, they are a partner of this project, uh, worked a lot uh, into uh, try to formulate these quits using a language that were um, uh, really understandable by, by the players and uh, uh, they made an interactive process in order to make them uh, uh, with the right level of uh, difficulty. Actually, we were introducing uh, just the two levels, the basic and intermediate one, but then uh, 
there are uh, some um, new feature in progress, like an advanced level that will be uh, released after the project. Um, in, a, in a nutshell, what the student most liked on this uh, game was uh, the funny plot, the narrative that you know, voice, the game dynamics, but also to be involved in the design of the game features, because uh, we actually um, made some uh, co-design with them, and the uh, main uh, output of this process were included into the game itself. So I can show some uh, examples. No. Like uh, the, the, the drawing of the characters, for instance, we gave them uh, a background about the tokens uh, balance, the, what kind of, ex uh, the, the pound basically of experience, knowledge and, uh, and money in the story of the character. And I tried to imagine uh, a, a person uh, with a, a background, uh, a role model, some interest, skills, personality, and uh, this uh, effort of empathize with this character made uh, the game are really uh, realistic and really and really engaging because it's like the same uh, age of uh, of there the same uh, next one mark the same with uh, uh, the chance cards the positive and the negative one they made uh, a lot of uh, brainstorming and ideas and actually we included uh, their suggestion uh, in the game no more Last thing, where uh, now you can find uh, the game, as uh, Professor Fornero said before, the game was released and uh, it's uh, available in the website of um, Carlo Alberto, uh, Collegio Carlo Alberto. Uh, you can download uh, some PDF files and uh, print it using the guide that we, we prepared, or if it's uh, uh, a big effort, you can uh, uh, give it to a print shop to do it for you. And then uh, uh, after building the game, you can play at, uh, with, with friends at school and, uh, and uh, make uh, several uh, gameplays because there's a, a um, quite good number of uh, questions and, uh, and chance cards. The game is available in English. It was already translated in, uh, in Dutch and uh, it will be translated in all the partner languages. So Italian, Polish, Finnish, and, uh, and French. Uh, thank you for, uh, <laughs> for your attention and uh, hope you will have the chance to download, build and try the, the game and uh, to give us your feedback. I leave the floor again to Marco for thank the you. next experiences. Yes, thank you, Emilia. Uh, just a quick uh, question by Erv Raken uh, that ask, who asks, uh, how do you measure the impact of decisions on well-being? Okay. Yes? I on think well we don't impact in the game. On well-being, uh, we introduced this uh, um, experience path that somehow can uh, uh, have a bit of a taste of well-being, but um, uh, yes, it's a game about uh, economics and trade-off and, uh, and decisions, so uh, we tried to introduce this um, uh, human dimension uh, in this way. So I'm seeing there are a, a lot of, uh, of questions. Uh, a PC game version asked, uh, well, they're, they're actually Marco. work in progress. Now we have to run. Sorry, if you have any question, you can write uh, uh, me. You, could, you should find the, uh, the email on the, on the project website, on the invitation for registration. So we can keep in touch uh, in uh, later this webinar because we have to run. So <laughs> sorry. Uh, so we can. Uh, just uh, um, go to the second section of our webinar, 
but first of all, I would like just quickly uh, thank um, Michael and Sandra by Nibud, who is uh, the, our partner that uh, focuses on the dissemination communication uh, aspect of the project, and also Oscar uh, by uh, of Moneywise, uh, who help us uh, support us uh, during for the creation of this um, uh, this uh, the webinar, and also gave us the idea to also invite other people. Uh, to uh, talk about their their experiences uh, and other project and so just to start uh, let's say that what there isn't a better way to start that from the abc so i'll, uh, I'll leave the floor to margareta Pshubua, we, who will talk about us about uh, the abc of uh, economics okay hello can you hear me yes we can Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for invitation and for um, uh, choosing our project and for the opportunity to share it here. I would like to congratulate the um, on the project angle. I'm so happy it will be translated into Polish, and I will try also to I will also try this game. Um, so I am representing Czapczynski Family Foundation. It's a foundation from Poland, and our mission is to support the education system and developing innovative um, education projects. And so far we have developed two education programs. Uh, one is uh, an inclusive education program, but another is a financial education program. And this is what I would like to talk to you about today. Uh, when our founder um, decided to engage into financial education, he decided to focus on the smallest, on children, because very often we are lacking financial programs for, for really the little ones. And we believe that we need to start with financial education from, um, from an early age, because this is the way um, that we can raise citizens who, who are financially literate and who, can, uh, and who are able to ask the right questions and take the right um, decisions. I will try maybe to share a presentation. Okay, the, the, the project I would like to present to you, it's called ABC of Economics. It's, um, it's addressed to children aged um, uh, five uh, to 10. And uh, the basic of the, of the project you will see here is a book, a book called ABC of Economics, First Steps in the World of Finance. Here in the book, you have 12 chapters and they really introduce to children the basic, uh, the basic concepts, the basic elements. So the children learn what is money, where does the money come from, what is the price, why do we have to work? Why do we have to save? What is, um, what is a, a home budget? So really a simple, uh, simple issues that they, they can identify with. Uh, together with the book, we have uh, developed uh, materials for teachers because we, develop, we believe this is very important to give teachers the right instruments so that, that, that they can uh, teach uh, finances and economics at schools. So we have developed uh, lesson scenarios for teachers adapted to two age groups for children five and six and for children seven and 10. We have also developed work, work cards uh, uh, for children. And uh, we have also uh, proposed to teachers a long list of, of games because as you, as you rightly said, I mean, only when you are engaged and you, get, and, and you play, you can, you can really learn. Um, uh, our foundation was uh, involved in the um, Global Money Week. Uh, yesterday in the European Parliament, we are organizing a high level debate about uh, financial education of, of children. And just afterwards, we went to Polish schools and Polish kindergartens in Brussels, and we ran financial uh, education um, workshops. And I have to say that children were so happy, children were so much engaged, they asked so many questions. But we could see that they are really lacking sometimes the basic knowledge because one question was, where does the money come from? And many children replied, mm, the money comes from a bank. But then when we started to talk to them um, a bit more in details, they, they quickly realized that uh, money doesn't come from a bank, the money comes from, um, uh, from uh, a work. So um, I just maybe want to say that this project that we have developed is currently um, applied in more than 1,200 schools in Poland and kindergartens. The feedback we are receiving from parents, children and teachers is very positive. Actually, more than 95% of teachers who use this program confirmed that they would like to use it in the future. 
Uh, and why? Because again, this program is, is complex. There is a book, there are materials for teachers, there are workers for children, at children, and we have also developed trainings for teachers. So it, it makes it really um, simple for teachers to apply it in a classroom. Um, when uh, talking to partners from all around Europe, we have realized that there is a niche everywhere and there is a need everywhere to engage into financial education of children. So we have translated our project into five uh, additional languages. And currently we are running pilot projects in three countries, uh, in Germany, in Italy, and in Spain. So we are um, evaluating the projects, we are testing the projects, and we will be adapting, adapting them to different needs in different member states. So if among the participants, there are any organizations who would like, who, who would like to share with us, they best practice who would like maybe to develop a language version, then please definitely um, get in contact uh, um, with us. Um, I know I don't have much time, so I think I will, I will stop here and I am very curious to listen about um, next projects. Thank you very much. Thank you, Margareta. Yes, uh, very interesting. Uh, the project, uh, yes. And so about what you said that people don't know uh, that young students don't know where money comes from. Maybe we can ask Kaspar Kar Kar Skraminski what money is since it's the title of uh, the next project. So Kaspar, thank you. Hello everyone and uh, happy Global Money Week. Uh, so very excited to be here to uh, participate in this webinar and to be able to share uh, to be able to share an approach um, uh, which again is based on questions, but I will not be able to provide the answers. The answers again uh, are up to up to the the players, actually the the participants of this game. So I decided to call it uh, "Money Is," and the background for that is I've been uh, I've been part of uh, Latvia's bank, the central bank uh, of Latvia, uh, for uh, a dozen years, and uh, very very practical experience uh, uh, sparked this idea that right now during parental leave I'm at home with a one-year-old and a, a five-year-old is in a kindergarten. So I would do kids actually learn about money? What is their starting point? So they start with a question. And the first question for me seemed, it, it has to be very, very simple, yet very effective. And uh, I tried to look into also, uh, from my professional perspective, into, let's say, academic resources and research approaches. And uh, turns out that behavioral economics actually uh, uh, allow us to frame questions that can actually have an impact. So it's not a question just like that, but it's a meaningful approach. And uh, for this uh, particular project, I decided to uh, at, first, uh, at first ask this question for myself. Can simple question spark behavioral changes? And turns out it does. So uh, first of all, uh, the, the case, the need for interventions is uh, very, very uh, evident here. Uh, people here in Latvia, and that is very typical also for other countries, have uh, ample knowledge. So in simple terms, we know what inflation is, but we don't really know how to deal with 20 plus percent of it uh, from month to month and so on. So that is one uh, case here. The other one is the gamified approach. Uh, we kicked off the National uh, Financial Literacy Strategy uh, two years ago, and one of the points regarding innovations in financial literacy is promoting gamified approach, which encourages uh, engagement here. And then I looked into uh, behavioral economics uh, approaches, which is the uh, cognitive dissonance theory and the question behavior effect. So asking questions about uh, certain, uh, certain behaviors uh, actually activates or stimulates some, uh, let's say, behavioral processes. And that in turn can affect uh, what our behavior will be in the future when uh, uh, a similar situation that we've been confronted actually arises. 
And another thing is being a very simple solution that you can pop in your uh, pocket. It's a very simple and affordable um, uh, way to uh, bring actually generations together. So uh, parents with their kids, grandparents with their grandchildren, uh, and many, many other uh, settings. So my guess is that money is as a project, it's still at its early stages, but it still asks the right questions. Uh, I, uh, I I made it a, 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 a very uh, important for me that it should be free for everyone. So uh, uh, yeah, it's there available on on, on the uh, on the on the website over there. It's also scalable. You can start from anywhere, and it's it doesn't require any batteries or charging or devices. Uh, and uh, it has some future potential as well, since it can diversify these teaching methods. Uh, future uh, implementations as a board game, as an app module, but uh, yeah, as a first step, I think this uh, this might just uh, work. This might just be one one of the first small steps, uh, and and then hopefully uh, hopefully encourage asking these questions about money. Remember, for many uh, people around the world, money is still a taboo topic, and uh, this is one way how to break the ice. So thank you very much for this opportunity to present this uh, small project that I developed during my time with the kids here at home and hopefully it inspires, uh, it's part, it's inspires uh, you to uh, ask questions about money as well. Thank you. Thank you, Kaspar. It's a very nice project and very nice story. Uh, uh, so let's move about to, uh, this thread of gamification. Let's move to uh, Saya Alanco that uh, will present uh, uh, their uh, project, uh, DigiConsumers. So, thank Saya. you for the invitation and and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, greetings from Vasa, from Finland. Uh, I work as a research uh, doctoral research at the uh, in economics. And we have had several projects about financial literacy. I will share my screen here. I hope you see this now. Can you see this, right? Perfect. Okay, this is our uh, campus here in Vasa. At the summertime now it's uh, minus four degrees and snowing. <laughs> so we have had several uh, financial literacy projects uh, at the University of Vasa. I will present to you um, our game Talos Tandem. Talos means economics in English, and um, the aim is to improve the ability of financial literacy of young people and young adults in, in Finland. Uh, the game was uh, developed in another project, which was funded by EU regional and structural policy programs. And there we had three, three gamified solutions and Talos Tandem was one of them. And then after Big Peg project, we started with a Digi Consumers project, which is ongoing, a project with five uh, different uh, in, uh, research institutes in Finland. And um, um, then uh, this game, which is in Finnish, unfortunately, at the moment. So the Bank of Finland wanted to put it on the, their website of their financial games. Uh, this game is also available on, uh, in App Store and Google Play, but also on web server if you want to look at it more. So how it works, this is a digital game and, um, and it's about uh, students everyday choices in student life. Uh, we go through three uh, study years with the student and asking questions, making uh, they put them make choices between two options by swiping the option card to right or left. And it's about balance of life. It's not only the finances, but it's also social relationships, happiness and academic success. And if one of those fail, then the game will end. And uh, it, it, it had to be start over again. So down here in the card, 
on the right side, you see one, one of the play cards and, and there is asked where you want to live. A student has to choose whether she wants to uh, live in the city center where the rent is higher or, or somewhere in the suburb, which is much cheaper. And then compared to the social subsidies given, given for the students. And the game uh, will give a, a, a feedback after every choice and then summary after every uh, student year. And, and here is one example of the summary of the after first study year. Uh, in this example, uh, students uh, have had medium, mediocre uh, choices and uh, uh, success in financial matters, social relationships, happiness and academic success. And, and fortunately, student loan zero euros at that moment. So we gathered feedback uh, from the students. Uh, I have to, uh, sorry, I have to go back. Uh, we have uh, used this game in our um, freshman business students uh, mandatory course of financial literacy, which is held every semester in this digital consumer projects. And we gather statistics to be used in further researchers. And, um, and, and one of the feedback uh, that we got from the game was that uh, the, the, the game illustrates uh, everyday life decisions uh, that come up in students' life. Um, it's not only, uh, only finances, but also other things. And every decision has an impact on many different things. And, and that, that's one, one good thing to, when we think about the behavior. So it's not only the finances, but all, all the circumstances around that affect our, our um, behavior in finances. So it's also the question that we have to take care of other aspects of life as well. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Saya. Uh, again, another interesting project related to gamification, uh, having entertainment try to involve uh, students and related also to this, uh, uh, this topic, we have uh, our last project uh, today, uh, Five to Survive by Megan Samuel Fields. We have to travel a little <laughs> up to Antigua and Barbuda. So thank you. And Megan, if you want to share. Great. Initiative. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so glad to be here. My name is Megan Samuel Fields. I'm the CEO of Samuel Fields Consulting Group. We are in Antigua and Barbuda in the Caribbean. A small island, but lots of sun, lots of fun. And I just want to congratulate the persons behind the angle game. Thought that was very, very interesting, as well as the other persons who are presented. It's very warm, heartwarming to see that there's much going on in ensuring that there is financial literacy and it's getting out to different persons. So I'm going to be presenting a game we created, which is called Set Your Money Musts in Motion. Five to survive, set your money musts in motion. And this came about from uh, um, a financial wellness conference that we have been holding. This has been the second year we've held the financial wellness conference. And we wanted to have something quite innovative and fun because we recognize that a lot of, lots of persons once we started speaking about finance, they got a little bit misty eyed and didn't want to get too involved in it. So we came up with a game, the five to survive, set your money must in motion. And it's about a young man named Devon who got some money from his father, grandfather, an inheritance. And in order to claim it, he had to follow instructions from his elders. Devon is a young man who comes into a financial inheritance, but he has one stipulation from his grandfather worth, and that is he must follow the advice from his elders about money management through the five money musts. One, set financial goals. Two, make a budget. Three, 
invest and multiply your money. Four, manage your debts. And five, enjoy your money. Money provides people with a sense of autonomy and the freedom to live their life they want to live. And so what we did was for each money must, we, Devon had to find one of the elders in the island and get advice from them. And this is just one, it's five money must, but we couldn't show all. So this is money must number one. Devon, listen to me. When you start a business, you have to plan for tomorrow. Where you start is not where you plan to finish. So you can't consume everything one time. You must yam some and live some. You hear me, son? And so we went through the five money musts and gave further explanation to the audience as to what is required for each of the money musts. At the end of the game, at the end of, yes, at the end of the game, we had a quiz through Kahoot, Five to Survive, the game of the money musts. And all the participants participated in this game to determine who would be the winner. So this is really the first phase of this game that we have created. The outcome has been, the feedback we've received has, have been excellent. Persons are realizing that there is need to let finance issues be more fun, more understanding and more simple. So our next step is to get this into an app so persons can play it on their phones. We are working on a board game and hopefully we want to actually have a series. So it'd be more than one game where Devon goes through different phases to understand financial knowledge. And so for us, our target audience is university students, as well as recently graduated university students. And we want to ensure that we democratize financial literacy, seeing the importance in our lives. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Sorry. Thank you very much again, all of you, for your precious uh, uh, presentations of your uh, initiatives. And uh, maybe Elsa would like to well, add something else. Well, it's time to end. We have gone over the hour uh, located to us. So, just a word of thanks uh, to everybody, to all the people that have participated actively and by listening or watching our meeting. And uh, we have discovered uh, a lot in common, a lot of engagement, uh, even a passion, if I may go back to my uh, previous word. And uh, um, this, I think, is very important uh, as I said, to improve our personal life and our uh, social life. And so uh, all the best to everyone and uh, go with financial literacy and financial education and stay in contact, all of you. And send us feedbacks. Yes. Ciao. Ciao all. Thank you, everyone. Bye.